leaving all other aspects of uh, I mean, which are not important uh, for uh, a society development and uh, what could be the uh, in integration because this specific uh, session is also going to address issues related to natural resource based uh, database ecosystems and that could form the components of the horizontal uh, plan I mean integration thank you thanks very much um, okay Several comments. I'll go around this way. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Blate. I'm the climate change coordinator for WWF's um, Greater Mekong program based here in Bangkok. I'd like to thank George for the provocative and nice framework for, for thinking about this question. And John, thanks for all the moderation and the panelists. I'd like to just come back to the point that you, sir, raised about flexibility, because I think it's very important to underscore it relates strongly to this issue of uncertainty. The uncertainty will always be there, and thank you, Pradeep, for, for, for reminding us about that. And I think it would be a horrible mistake for us to wait until we have, you know, 5% or 10% more certainty before we take action. You know, all the science and even the economics are pointing to taking action earlier is going to be less costly over the long run. So this point about flexibility is, or urgent action is important. That also brings up the issue of proactive adapt approaches to adaptation. So really thinking about how to work together across the sectors. I think, coming back to your question, John, we have to work across the sectors because if we don't, then the possibility, the likelihood of what we call maladaptation will increase. If, this, if one sector says, this is what we need to do to make this you know, particular infrastructure more able to cope, well, that might be horrible for you know, for, for housing or, or health or ecosystems, right? So the key point is we need flexible approaches and we need adaptive management. So that's one. The second point, if I may, is just coming back to um, our distinguished guest from UNFCCC. I think the how to do it, which also points to the, the learning and the capacity building is let's get on the ground, sorry, on the job training for simple tools which are available now, which is integrated land use planning. Let's look at harmonization across all the disparate you know, development plans of the different agencies at both the national and the provincial scale. Get those technicians to look at how their plans stack up on the landscape, right? So that you don't end up with all these superimposed, you know, often conflicting uh, uh, instruments or land uses, and that will actually increase resilience. Thanks very much. Uh, let's pick up, sorry, Kai Kim, you next. Yes, my name is Kai Kim, and I'm currently consulting with the Asian Development Bank. Um, for me, this topic really was more, um, when I, when I thought about it, it was more trying to perhaps understand from colleagues who are working um, either focusing on e ecosystem or coastal management or maybe even working at government level or um, city level, local government level, city level. I mean, what are your experiences in, and your views in how uh, cross-sectoral uh, integration or, or collaboration is important at, when, when you're working on that sort of level. So if um, members of the panel could address that, or even members of the audience who are working on this, these topics, if you could um, provide your perspectives, I think that would be really helpful. Thank you. Thanks very much. That, that's a very important point, isn't it? You know, the, the issue of fragmentation and coordination isn't new, and indeed there's major areas such as ICZM, IWRM and so on, where the, the, these, this has been going on a long time, as well as, if you like, just, just the overall integrated development approaches, urban planning and so on. So experiences from other areas about this issue would be very informative, I think. So uh, next, in the middle, yeah. Thank you. My name is Ola Möller. I come from the uh, Swedish Environmental Secretariat here in, uh, in Bangkok. Um, I have basically two comments or questions, and please bear with me if I'm a bit general and, and sweeping in, in those comments. Firstly, um, I have a question uh, more regarding research and technologies. Um, basically, can research play a role in, the, in, in this work of integration? I, as a donor representative, um, is often met and, and told that 
Knowledges are available, uh, practices are there, it's just a matter of rolling out, we need to take action and so on. Um, the challenges are well known and, the, and, and we know what to do to, to meet them. Uh, is this true? Is there no role for research in the future? Is it more a question of focusing on action now, meeting whatever challenges and demands there are on different levels, be it global as well as, as local? So, uh, is, there, is there any need for research actually right now, uh, and why? Secondly, um, I've been listening here today, and, and I've been to a number of conferences focusing on climate change over the years. Um, um, I must say, I'm, I'm, I think you all uh, agree with me that when I'm saying that environmental problems have been known for, and been on the uh, international agenda for, what, 40, 50 years? And, um, still we're facing worse challenges than ever before and uh, to me at least it looks like all the forecasts are telling us that development is not going the right way quite the opposite everything is pointing the wrong way so are we doing something wrong here are we using the same tools that been, we've been using for 40 years that has shown not really successful are we using the wrong tools and are there other tools that we should use? Should we all join Greenpeace? Thank you. Thanks very much. I'll just pick up on one point there, because I think that is an interesting just perspective on, you know, is development moving in the right direction? And I guess my personal sympathies are in that way as well. But, you know, I've had people who are believers in growth say, there's a billion people in Asia who are not poor, whose parents were poor. So they feel maybe things aren't moving in the right direction. And so th this is a balance, isn't it, you know, in achieving this? Uh, sorry, please. Uh, I am Cho Tong uh, from the Mongolian Development Institute. Uh, I would like uh, to say uh, several points. Uh, so I was trying to study vulnerability of pastoral social ecological systems uh, at different scales, at community and uh, at uh, administrative unit scale, uh, there was question, and at uh, national scales. And uh, to me, is uh, adaptation is a reduction of vulnerability. And uh, uh, at the same time, uh, what I, uh, I what I have learned was so many projects have been going on, and we have to be honest that they were often not successful because they were fragmented. Uh, just uh, often, just uh, just projects, so many projects on on the conservation side, or just on uh, social well-being side or uh, just uh, very often just fragmented and uh, just simply uh, this, so it's very easy uh, easy to say maybe just uh, how we can do uh, win-win situ situation for adaptation both socially and ecologically but uh, it's uh, easy really easy to say however in terms of I would like I will I would like to see future adaptation policies, implementations, uh, to be a more real win-win situation, both socially and ecologically. So it's a, a very important uh, aspect to me. Thanks very much. Uh, one more comment, then we will come back to our panel. Thanks. Uh, I'm Ananda Malatantri with the UNDP Sri Lanka. Actually, my question is on the barriers in communication. I think uh, it was proven beyond doubt that we need to work cross-sector cross really. But what do we got? We got the Minister of Finance who talks about one language. Minister of Environment talks about one language. Minister of Agriculture talks about another language, another entity. Communities talking another language and the schools listening, all of them. So how do you uh, come up with the strategy? Because at the end of the day, if you don't aware all these people and get the buy-in, we will have a lot of problems. So I'd like to hear a little bit about how do you break this uh, communication barrier 